Say for the sake of argument, you found yourself stuck at home for an extended period of time and you still wanted to be able to demonstrate some cool chemical phenomena. Well, as it turns out, of course, the kitchen is absolutely jam-packed full of all kinds of things that you can be showing off. And so I decided this month to narrow things down just to a very simple thing associated with some fruit. I've got a good stash of these around. I'm taking care of myself. And we're going to be looking at one of the chemicals present in the skin are some citrus fruit. This is limonene. So let's get into it. Um, so I've got some closest thing I could come up with for some molecular models uh, at home. I, ex I hope you'll excuse my the liberties that I've taken uh, with my bond lengths. I don't think there's going to be a future for me as a um, balloon artist, but we can but try. Um, and I've made some models here of a molecule called isoprene. And essentially what we have here I'm trying to model out is uh, two double bonds joined together by a carbon-carbon single bond. Um, and coming out the end we have a CH3 group here. You'll excuse my little sort of hydrogen closest thing that I could sort of come up with associated for this. This is the building block for many molecules in natural products called the terpenes. So it turns out that limonene, that smell that we associated with, so that, that fresh um, orange peel, lemon peel, etc., added um, to many cleaning agents, is an example of a terpene as also is the, um, the many of the carotenoids that give the oranges, etc., their orange color. Also, of course, famously are carrots. So there are many, many examples of terpenes that we can look out for, and they all come from these sort of isoprene building blocks. What do we have here? Carbon, carbon, single bond, double bond, double bond, um, and here's my sort of CH3. Now, if I get two of these together, we can kind of see how potentially we can begin to form like a six-membered ring here. Um, and coming off the top, we would therefore have a carbon-carbon double bond and a CH3 and then a CH3 coming off of the other end. And essentially, that is the structure of limonene. We get two of these isoprene molecules and we stick them together. Now, when we look at that, we see that we've got a, like a hydrocarbon there, essentially, with a six-membered ring in the middle. And that's actually pretty similar in terms of its structure to cyclohexane. So we might, of course, expect similar kinds of properties from this molecule that we can find in the peel of our orange. Now essentially what you want to be able to do is cut off a section of peel, a little bit like this, and you want to get as much of the Flavido, fancy name, there for the outer layer of the orange peel, that's the sort of coloured section, um, and as little as possible of the actual flesh of the orange, which of course is going to be full of sort of moisture. We want to maximize how much actual limonene that we've got present in there. So here you can see quite a good sort of section of uh, peel that I've generated here. Now, the only other thing essentially you're going to need is a candle. And what you want to do is heat up a section of your orange peel over the candle flame to warm up those uh, oil sacs that are present in there and give it a squeeze and you'll immediately be able to see that really cool effect that you're gonna get from the surprisingly flammable content of your orange peel. Again, big smoke coming off the top showing those unsaturated molecules in the flame. Now, of course, um, any molecule that's similar in terms of structure to cyclohexane is going to have the same kind of effect on um, uh, our balloons as cyclohexane will do. And in an earlier exhibition chemistry, we saw how devastating cyclohexane can be for the structure of balloons, because it turns out that balloons are also, they are made of latex, which is itself made from isoprene building blocks. So any combination of limonene, with our balloons, we might find that uh, we're gonna get some rather surprising results. Uh, it's not as good in terms of its reliability as cyclohexane, but if you play that up in the right direction, the tension that you can build from that as a demonstration opportunity um, can open up uh, some uh, excitement for your class. <laughs> tends not to be as dramatic as the cyclohexane, but that gives you this terrifying thing of, is it gonna pop? And if so, when will it pop?
There we go. <laughs> So there you have it, simple demonstration that you can show off with the surprising result of a compound that you can find in the outer layer of an orange and its similarities to a balloon from which we've modeled our isoprene. Give it a try, hopefully the next time I see you we'll maybe be back in a lab, who knows, take it easy.